Chocolate. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Marion Peppelmeyer from Columbus, Ohio, and we have a guest on today. Her name is Stacy Green. She is. Hello. Yeah, say hello, Stacy. Howdy, everybody. <laughs> she is rearing and ready to go, and she has a lot to share today. But she is currently serving as the Igniting Soul, a Cleveland, Ohio chapter. So she's a fellow chapter leader, and she has much to say, and, and it's going to be a very good time today. So Stacy, I want to share a little bit um, on who you are to introduce you. We have known each other through Author Academy Elite now, almost two years. I think it's been two yeah, years. Yeah, I was thinking it's a little closer to three. Yeah, 2000. Yeah. It's yep. been awesome. We never would have known each other if it wasn't for Author Academy Elite, and we've remained friends and collaborating together ever since. So this is one of my hopes that among all the chapters, and especially the Columbus chapter, of course, that we would all begin collaborating together and really working with each other in all different ways and means that we can get out our messages to help others to ignite those souls around the world in our specialty areas of messages and life experience. So Stacy Green is an author who enjoys speaking and writing about life experiences that stretch us above and beyond uh, where we normally are and allow us to grow or where we often are stagnant. Her, her writing is challenging. Uh, she goes at the heart of things. So. Her books are very, very good. As a three-time Ironman finisher and ice skating instructor, <laughs> I wish you could demonstrate for us right now that ice skating. <laughs> and an oh, Ironman finisher. Wow, I don't want to meet you in a battle, Leslie. <laughs> she, <laughs> you'll either be swinging with your skates or uh, or right. spinning. Woo! <laughs> But uh, and because of all of this background, she and and she's also a health coach, so um, she understands that results often come from long, hard work and a few falls along the way. Yep. Yeah, which uh, and picking up her books, getting to know her, will understand that she has had her had her falls in life. Although writing from a Christian perspective, she appeals her writing appeals to all audiences with her stories and her programs so um stacy let's cover a couple of your books first i believe sure. that stronger than broken and you can't read it because of the glare of the light you have to tilt it <laughs> tilt it tilt it right well you, you have a copy there you can you can show there up there, yeah. Tilt it yeah, that way. Better. Yes, much better. Stronger than broken, Stacy Green. Um, and then her other book is Letters to the Dead Men. Right there. Yep. And uh, in both these books, she delves into e emotions and, and finding a way out and resolving grief, loss, and, and forgiveness. And I probably stole your thunder, but... Uh, what would you like to share about, uh, you wrote Stronger Than Broken first, so just a couple minutes yeah. on that. So Stronger Than Broken is um, one couple's journey through an affair. Um, it always uh, disturbed me when people would say comments like, oh, once a cheater, always a cheater, or oh, on some level, a woman always knows when her husband's cheating. I was an example where that was not true. I was dumbfounded and blindsided when I found that my husband had been having an affair that was about six months long. Um, took me completely by surprise. But uh, my father, really tremendous, tremendous uh, person, he raised me to always look at the big picture. And so I remember thinking, all right, this affair happened at our 25th, shortly after our 25th uh, year of marriage. And so I closed my eyes and kind of imagined, well, what would happen if we made it to our 50th year of marriage and we were sitting in rocking chairs watching the children and the grandchildren bring us a happy anniversary cake and so in my head I thought well six months versus 50 years six months versus 50 years I had to look at the big picture and think that as long as both of us still wanted to work it out 
that there must be something we could do. So that's stronger than broken. Now, that was my forgiveness book. But um, shortly after writing that, um, I was discovering that I had not appropriately grieved some people in my life that I lost too soon. And so the next book I wanted to write was Letters to the Dead Men. And it is an exploration of a young girl who, between the ages of 10 and 40, has lost six significant figures in her life and how she dealt with the grief. And uh, so that kind of led me on the coaching journey because I know that we've all lost somebody. Mm -hmm all had a situation at least once where we didn't get to say goodbye. We didn't get to apologize to that person if we treated them poorly. We didn't get to thank that person if they taught us a life lesson. And so that was the birth of the second book. Wow. Wow. That's very, very good. And um, very real life lessons. Mm -hmm. um, all of us go through them. And it, it must have been difficult in writing both of them. And yet they're powerful messages for today in one standing strong in a marriage through all kinds of trials mm -hmm. and then how to really grieve appropriately um, or what is grief or what is loss or how, how can you appreciate those who are alive today before mm -hmm. they're so it's a Mary, and honestly, that's why I think you and I resonated so well when we heard each other on a coaching call through our publisher was because you were also writing a grief book and your grief was completely different than mine. Yours was grieving a person you never met. And um, that just added a whole new dynamic to, to even my own thinking as I was writing letters to the dead men. And so I think that, you know, you and I have so much. Wow to the world um, to just talk about the grief process and, and getting through it on so many different levels in order for us to become functional again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is, which is um, amazing because in the midst of all the coronavirus pandemic, right. um, I've been thinking very hardly about the, the grief cycle, the grief process that we yeah. all go through. And all of America, in fact, the entire Ooh. world, whether they realize it or not, are walking through mm -hmm. the tremendous uh, the tremendous grief cycle, which starts with denial, can move into anger, and then finally depression, or move in and out, mm -hmm. and then finally to acceptance and moving on, bargaining. All of those issues come into play, and right now, yeah. individuals who have um, unfortunately lost their jobs, which I do know of friends who were right. um, in the catering business, restaurant business, have lost jobs. And right. Well, you know, I'm not teaching skating right now. There's no public facility open right now. So um, yeah, I've lost one of my sources of income. Um, thank goodness for being an author and an entrepreneur, so. Right, yeah, and people don't take it. They, they see this and we can seize in the American spirit of things. Yeah, we, we and I think in humanity across the board, we can all jump in for a while, you know, like right. all of a sudden life has come to a sterling halt or, you know, uh, when Pearl Harbor happened, when, um, you know, World War II happened, all those major, when 9-11, we all can do that. But for prolonged periods of time, all of a sudden, um, people are having to maneuver through these things because it is a whole change in, in way of life, perhaps. We don't know what's around the corner. So all these topics are extremely important now so that people will understand why their emotions might be up and down or why, even if they're strong in faith, why they may be struggling. If, um, if some individuals may have no faith at all, but they still have mm -hmm. faith in something. Right, right. So, um, all, all of these uh, maneuver so differently. I was, yeah. yeah, I was just specifically intrigued, Leslie, when um, we were talking earlier, because we do talk a lot. <laughs> we yeah. have to help each other a lot. We do. And because of what she's already been through and wrote, wrote in both uh, Stronger Than Broken and Letters to the Dead Men, she can apply it uh, today in um, how marriages 
that all of a sudden, maybe the man and wife are both working full time. They only come home in the evenings together. Okay. <laughs> really only see right. them on weekends. Or um, I guess I'm really segueing here, maybe off topic, but uh, my concern has been for women in abusive husband relationships and all of a sudden they're stuck in a very right. place. Or even, even in the very best of marriages, you know that even in the best of marriages, there's one or two little annoying habits that your wife may have or that your husband may have, or there's something that you don't like about that person. And when you are with that person now 24 seven, those issues are gonna be magnified and amplified big time. And so I am, I'm definitely available for coaching calls on how to survive just being with your spouse. Um, there were a couple of issues my husband and I had that first two weeks. And now we sort of worked them out and we've allowed ourselves some space. And uh, we're, we're trying to find that balance of spending more time together. Uh, we're definitely watching more movies together. We're, we went kayaking yesterday. But then there's also that time of okay, he's let him go to the man cave, let me go into my office, or let him go on that bike ride, let me go bake another cake or something. But we do need our space, we do need our distance. And so I know that um, when you mentioned the abusive, I'm thinking, wow, you know, my husband and I have this amazing marriage, and we're still picking on each other. So you're right, Marion, um, when there's an abusive relationship or a bad relationship, or a relationship that's on the verge of using the D word, divorce. Um, this can be an incredibly trying time. And so it's a, it's a wonderful thing that you and I both coach. Now, what I will say is that um, to all of our viewers out there, if Marion or I get a client or a potential client and we do our 20 minute free call and we don't feel capable of the scope of the problem, like Marion just um, spoke about abusive marriages. And we both, because of our publisher and the tribe that we hang out with, we both have other resources that we can direct you to. In fact, we are both friends with a woman who wrote an incredible book about surviving abuse. She has um, nine children, and I think when she was with the abuser, they had five of them together, and uh, some of them had special needs. So. If uh, Marion and I ever do a, a coaching call and we don't feel uh, prepared, we definitely will refer you to somebody else in our gigantic tribe of authors and entrepreneurs and speakers. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, there's help, there's help for everyone and we will we'll be honest and open if it's beyond our scope. So what are some of the, the tips that you have for maintaining a strong marriage in the midst of a storm? Right. Well, right now, the main thing was, again, to find that balance of you don't have to be in the same physical space with that person 24-7. I know my husband and I have bumped into each other often in our tiny kitchen, and I laugh because I think you're right. We don't both have to be in there at the same time. It's just kind of ironic. Um, but I had one really fun idea that I thought would be um, worthy of trying. We can't go out to our, our normal haunts. We can't go to our bar where we see a local band. We can't go out to dinner right now. Uh, so basically we have spent three weeks in our, what I call my house pants and my Crocs. And I don't have the, uh, this was like the first day in about three days that I found earrings and put some lipstick on. So I have a fun idea that I think is definitely worth um, doing if you and your spouse are really missing date night. I suggest having date night in another room of the house that you don't normally use. Uh, we don't usually use our formal dining room. So I think it would be a, just a wonderful thing if we had date night anyways, meaning TV goes off, cell phone gets put in a drawer, take off the Crocs and the sweatpants, put the makeup on as if you were going out in public, put the fancy jewelry on as if you were going out in public and segment a time that you truly are going to sit down to that nice meal. Uh, go ahead and there's all those carry out places now. Go ahead and have your restaurant meal at home all dressed up and fancy as if you were going out in public because guess what? You're going to get really tired of seeing your spouse <laughs> in his work clothes or uh, seeing me in my sweatpants 
for another month. So that's just one of the ideas I had. Um, I'm also super concerned about all of the moms and dads out there that are suddenly thrust into the role of being not only a parent, but a teacher. Have you Mary, heard some of your friends talk about the fear that's coming along with what's going on with the schools being closed? Well, I'm well aware of it only because um, we happen to have homeschooled our children. Now they're all grown. Same. But Same. I, I know of friends that uh, haven't been able to do that. I have younger friends with children at you know, who have gone off to school and now they're home. Right. I got off the phone earlier today with a friend whose uh, son is a senior and he's grieving, although they're strong in their faith. That's right. He's going through all the shock of, oh my goodness, I was ready for the prom. I was ready, yep. ready for this. He had this concert coming up. He had this performance coming up. Yep. He had, you know, and then no official graduation ceremony where for what, 16 years of his life, maybe. 12 years, yeah. I don't know, 12 years, I guess. Well, 13 if you count kindergarten, 13, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was even thinking about all the athletes because my children were all high school athletes and, you know, I'm just thinking about all the spring sports, all the baseball and um, track and what are some of the other spring sports. Uh, all of those kids no longer get to do their uh, final senior year and get their senior letter and um, yeah, it's devastating. And it's funny because when we think of loss, we think, oh, somebody died. But loss is not just a death. Loss is, for me, going through the infidelity. Um, that was a loss of trust. That was a huge loss to me. For these high school seniors, the loss of the, the closure that they need before they go off to college or school, that's a loss. And that's why I'm so glad, you know, that that we're here. We're here for coaching because loss comes in so many so many ways so many ways yeah yeah exactly the um going back to the families that are now thrust into homeschooling it mm -hmm. was an adjustment for me now i homeschooled in the beginning of the homeschooling movement yeah I didn't have all the tools and all the acceptance in society mm -hmm. as it is now and um i i feel for the moms who all of a sudden are mm -hmm. in this position because it was an adjustment for me to be honest although i took one yeah. daughter and got her brought up and then my son came along and brought him on up that um i know if i had three or more kids i couldn't have homeschooled so <laughs> well, i had three and it was okay it was okay but just think about this marion so for them yeah I homeschooled on purpose we chose that right crazy is that there are just millions of parents out there that didn't chose it, right. choose it, and it was thrown upon them. And so I um, decided that, hey, I've got all this time on my hand, and I have some insight, and you do too. So I threw together a little ebook, just a very quick guide um, to put up on Amazon, and I did it the other day, so I'm not sure if it's available quite yet at the time of this recording. Mm -hmm. But it is called um, Homeschooling During and Beyond Corona, um, the COVID-19. Uh, the subtitle is How to Engage Your Child Without Losing Your Sanity in This Time of Social Distancing. And it's just a real quick, easy read because truly, truly, the Facebook feeds I'm seeing and the comments I'm seeing from the younger moms, um, it, it's sort of sad because I think a lot of them are thinking, Oh my goodness, my child is in school for seven hours a day. Now I have to put my teacher hat on and stand at the dining room table and teach for seven hours. And there's nothing that could be farther from the truth. Mm -hmm. I just wrote that, popped that little ebook out just to kind of allow parents that uh, opportunity to take a deep breath and realize that that's not the case at all. Um, I was a physical education major in college, got my Bachelor of Science in Education, and we were taught right away that in a typical seven-hour school day, a huge portion of that day is spent reprimanding students, getting students back on task, having students walk from class to class, study hall or recess, lunch break, that there's very, a very, very small, small period in that seven hours that's true academia. Mm -hmm. Parents can take a big, big, deep breath and know that no, you will not be 
shoving textbooks and flashcards down your children's throats for six hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure you can, you can speak to this too if you homeschooled your kids as well. There are so many, so many ways to have fun with learning and to oh, amazing ways. Day. Yeah, yeah. There's amazing ways. Yeah, I, I, and I, I pass this on for the, the families with children or grandparents with children. You know, mm -hmm. some grandparents That's you true. Know, are custodian of their children. All of a sudden, now they're home. Is I turned mm -hmm. everything in. I turned every field trip, every outing into learning. Yeah. So uh, in this day with the COVID and the safe distancing on nice weather, and it is getting nicer now, mm -hmm. uh, you know, take advantage of the recess time, you know. Yeah, yeah. You can't take advantage of getting them outside. Take it, You could even do creative field trips. Right. And um, I don't know, I'm just thinking this off the top of my head in Ohio. There's... Mm -hmm. Uh, a velvet ice cream has a mill. Well, I'm sure it's all shut down. I'm sure it's not open to the public, right. but that that would be a drive out, mm -hmm. out from the greater Columbus area up to there to see an old grist mill, and you can talk about the history of it without going inside. Right, uh, right. Perhaps they allow you to park there and use their playground, but there's so yeah. many well, things like that. that yeah, it's crazy. I, I did take a little girl that I am um, friends with. I took her to um, our local park and the playground had caution tape all around it, but the <laughs> okay. was open and there was a pond with three separate docks. And I was just so delighted to see that there were tons of other families out there, but nobody, you know, if they saw us on one dock, they kept their distance. And when we left the dock, then mm -hmm. they turn and it was really nice. But the other thing that you and I, Marion, we're, we're old timers. And yeah. so we homeschooled our kids. We didn't use a lot of computers. We did use a lot of um, good old fashioned encyclopedias and books in the library, which now we don't have access to. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, one of the things that you younger moms watching this and younger dads and younger, younger grandparents that are stepping in, um, you do have the world at your fingertips with the computer. Uh, as I was writing the ebook, I was having a blast finding all of these sites that have, um, there's a Facebook page if you're missing choir, if you're a high school choir singer, there's a Facebook call, uh, page called Duet Yourself, D-U-E-T, Duet. <laughs> and, um, you join that and you can send little videos in of songs and singing and uh, there's uh, virtual tours of museums, and there's virtual tours of mm. orchestras. And so I think that at least in this time of the COVID-19, at least parents have a lot of options to enrich outside of the textbook. But that was the main thing that I wanted the ebook to really, really bring home to people is that, um, yeah, textbooks are great, flashcards are great. Whatever your teacher in your particular school district is requiring, yeah, yeah, get that done. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, find things that can enrich and enlighten those same lessons. So, I, and I'll tell you, Marion, you know this. Didn't those 18 years just fly by? Oh, yes, but, they did. I mean, there were days where I just really wanted to pull my hair out. If I saw one more toy in the entryway and one more crayon in the couch and one more pretzel crumb on the bottom of the van, I just wanted to scream. And, and you know what though? It just goes by in the blink of an eye and I don't ever regret having my kids with me at that time and just there for them. Right, right. Yeah. Wow. And then for yeah. the... Um, for all of our chapter members, perhaps who don't have children at home, mm -hmm. um, I believe a lot of these things could apply. You know, there's online learning. There's um, right. if you haven't enrolled in BAE, you may you may opt to do that. You've yeah. been, if you've been thinking about ghostwriting, you may opt to do that, or or you get more tooling and train in your area of coaching. It's really a, a time to pull back and readjust and really examine where do you want to go and we are so blessed now that we do have this high tech available right because I could not imagine being isolated I'm personally it's a big secret <laughs> I'm an extrovert <laughs> <laughs> that's not a big secret sorry <laughs> 
But that's a good segue into talking about chapter leaders because you introduced me as a Cleveland chapter leader for Author Academy. And truly, truly, I just love that opportunity to share. But my particular chapter at this time is pretty small. And I was surprised because Cleveland's a fairly big city. So to all of the Columbus people that are watching this on uh, Marion's Columbus page, if you know any authors or wannabe authors in the Cleveland area, please contact me. And in like manner, I'm going to put this on my Cleveland page, any Cleveland chapter people that know of other authors in the Columbia, Columbus area, we're gonna contact you, Marion. Because we, Marion and I wanna see these chapters just explode. And we are, we are both so all in, 100% all in, in uh, working with the publisher that we use because it goes so much beyond just writing a book. There's so many other products and services and, and uh, ways that we can impact impact lives. And that's what it's all about. And, and together, to use a new cliche in our country, together, collectively yeah. together, all of our chapter members, everyone out there in Columbus land and Ohio land and everywhere else, we all together um, need to really take advantage of this downtime yeah. and really help one another, spur one another on, learn from one another. I am learning from every chapter member yeah. that I've been interviewing so far. I learned so much right. and we're all given um, gems. Mm -hmm. We're all given such gems that um, God has given to all of us um, to impart to others. And so right. let's all take advantage of this. And right. um, I definitely will keep my ears open for anyone that I encounter from the Cleveland, Ohio area. Yeah, I'll thank you. you. Leslie and, and Ditto and wow. I just want to thank, thank you all for, for watching this. <laughs> All right. Being here, you know, and right. Stacy Green signing out. Thank you, everybody, for watching. That's right. Yeah. And Marion signing out. We'll talk to you later, guys. Together we'll make it. Yep. Bye bye. Bye bye.